Welcome back to another episode of Cork Up. I'm Jess Kleinschmidt. I'm Rachel Lewitt. And this is not water. Yeah, it looks like water, weirdly enough. Because um, I was going to do water, but mama needs a drink today. Um, we have a lot to go over, mainly just Hall of Fame stuff and spring training. Um, it feels like Hall of Fame stuff comes and bites us in the ass every year. Um, so on that note, what's our wine word of the day, of the week? Uh, our wine word is bonds or berry bonds, whichever berry one. Um, and why don't you show off your shirt, little mama? Yeah. This is a bold statement, uh, momentum shirt. It's berry bonds is a hall of famer because I will wear this every day, Yeah. Uh, every, but like periodically every, every day until he is rightfully elected. Um, I a hundred percent agree. Um, I've said it before on the show. Um, I do love steroids. I love what they did to the game and it's time to embrace it. Um, so we're just going to dive right into it. Uh, let's start first and foremost. How weird is it that nobody was fucking elected into the hall of fame? Like that's not normal. So I don't understand. So we're going to start with that. Like how abnormal is that? Uh, I mean, but it's coming off of 2020. So I feel like I expect everything to be unexpected this yeah. year or this past year. Right. So right now, nothing really shocks me. We're going to blame um, everything on fucking 2020. Yeah, forever. Um, but I think my, my thought all along has been that they're going to make bonds and clemens wait until their last year because they want them to sweat it out um ultimately though i do think they're going to get in I but agree. to me it was more shocking that they dropped they dropped right um mm-hmm. uh, you know in in percentage so um I, but i'm shocked that no one no one got in shilling was cl- will said it was the fourth time that it's ever happened. I think they started voting in 1930 or something like that. Um, I, I'm curious though, because the state of the actual voting feels like it's a mess. It feels like a monkey humping a doorknob and then boom, go. That's what it fucking feels like. And it feels like, I don't understand. Like why? I mean, that's a great image you just gave us. Yeah, I know. Um, It just feels like it started off and I'm going to take Alex Pavlovich, who's my colleague. He covers the Giants at NBC Sports Bay Area. It's, I feel like it used to be where we would look forward to the Hall of Fame voting every single year. And now it's just a fucking joke. And I don't know the details of the Hall of Fame voting. I'm hoping to gosh, one day I'd never get a vote just because it feels like it's such a joke. And I think it's because the thing that I get mad about is the whole character portion of it. And I'm finally kind of embracing like you can be a piece of shit and still be in the hall of fame. Um, and I feel like certain people who tweet shitty things obviously it depends on what they tweet, but I, I, I mean, I'm not going to touch on Kurt Schilling too much. Cause I feel like that's like really weird water, but I'm talking about if we're going to constantly say Barry Bonds did steroids so he shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. I feel like it's a tired act. And I feel like it's also proving to the to people that were trying to transition and embrace baseball. But why can't we embrace what happened in that era? And even if you don't, the dude when he was me and your size still had Hall of Fame numbers. So I'm not understanding why it's that the whole voting process just look it's like a joke. If people are turning in blank ballots, why? How is so, that even possible? Well, so my my issue with it though is that Barry Bonds, to me, I, I understand the integrity part. Um, you know, and and to me, the character integrity is playing the game integrity because this is about the game. And so I understand where PEDs come up and things like that when you cheat. However, he never they did not enforce cheating. And so my my I guess like what I always kind of fall back to or try to think about to put it into more relevant context what if in you know 20 years we decide or even in five years we decide we're going to enforce uh you know the ban on sticky stuff for pitchers right and 
there's the same sort of suspensions. They, they look for it and they actively punish for it. Now, are we going to go back and what we would have to do is, I mean, obviously anyone at that, po at that point, when they start enforcing it, they're going to be banned and they'll, they'll get punished, et cetera. But then what do we do with all the pitchers right now? And in the last like several years, because I would say I'm, uh, large majority of them are using sticky stuff. And so yeah. are we going to go back and say, well, this person probably did, this person probably did. And now are, are all of them like not allowed in the hall of fame? Because it, it's technically, it, it's technically prohibited in MLB, but they don't enforce it. And right. so if I don't enforce, like, so to me, Barry Bonds, unless he failed a test when they started testing, which he did not, he did not. then, then you can't, you can't like sit there and punish him for it. And I mean, I, to me, he's a hall of famer, the Kurt Schilling thing. I know he's controversial, but again, that in the end, the character part, we are every writer. I feel like will say undeniably, he should be in the hall of fame for his baseball and how he played the game. And I agree. And they want to take this off field stuff about his political views, et cetera. And to me, that's not a part of, of the game. It's that we're talking integrity playing the game and as an athlete. And I, I just, it bothers me. And I, and I agree. And, and I guess with the Kurt Schilling, the only reason why I have an issue talking about it is because I'm just petrified. Somebody's going to twist my words, honestly, but I, uh, Monty Poole, who I work with, um, he's black. And he said that as much as he hated having to vote for Kurt Schilling, he did it because he took all of the embracing the, the guys who uh, stormed the Capitol. Monty's very open about being a proud black man and everything else. But he even said, as much as I hate him as a person, the guy was a damn good pitcher. Yeah. And I totally respect that. I give the Medal of Honor or freedom right. or but but what about this this portion that I'm always worried about just because like when I first heard about steroids I said fuck you Barry Bonds no absolutely not mind you I was like 16 years old like I didn't understand it but as time went on I was like okay so then what if a writer over time wants to change their vote how would you feel like as a fan because I feel like if I ever had a vote I think times would change and so if I was 16 voting, I'd be like, no, he doesn't deserve it. But if I'm now my age voting and working in the industry and I've seen so much, what, do you feel like I would get, people would come at me? No, I mean, I, there's two ways to look they at it. They won't come at me. They always fucking come at me. But, you know. <laughs> but look, I think the way I see it, I think people can grow. People can, as time, as they see things, as they see more, as they have more life experiences, they can change their minds about everything. And I think as a society, we need to get on board with that, that people can say things when they're younger and change how they feel about it when they're older. That's okay in any, in any respect. Um, but though, I don't know, to me, it's not a, the, the, the steroid thing is just, they didn't enforce it back then. Yeah. And so and there are people in the Hall of Fame now that, that yeah. did stand. And there are people that are probably going to do it. We may not, we may never know. And exactly. I think that's what I think, though. I think fans get off on thinking they know everybody who did and who didn't do steroids. Like, fans get off on that. Like, I, it's weird. Because at the end of the day, we have no idea, right? We literally do well, not know. Listening they fail a test and yeah. I would say that's a that's a solid enough right like that's solid enough evidence to say definitively you did steroids and you will not be in the hall of fame and can we also talk about that there are different forms of performance enhancing drugs just so we're clear like I feel like there's the the PEDs that help you get healthier like back quicker from an injury perhaps that's a whole nother podcast I feel but I'm just letting people know I don't think we should all just say, oh, you take something and boom, you hit 762 home runs. That was a Bonds reference. But I just want people to know that don't just categorically put steroids in one little right. box. There's a lot now. And, and look, I will tell you that I think most players, if you talk to them today and ask them if they think steroids are still around in the game, they'll tell you that they 
still exist. In the I mean, yeah, yeah, people are still getting popped for them. Like, exactly. just, it's insane. And, you know, I mean, I often think about like my children, if I ever have kids and they were to approach me and be like, hey, I want to do steroids. I'd be like, let's figure something out. Like, let's, let's, I don't hate that. Get your little signing bonus and we'll move on from there type you know of deal. Tre- like Trevor did a really interesting video on it on the Rob, when Robinson Cano got popped. And honestly, I think I recommend everybody listen to it because I think he take, he has a take on it that not many people are, were expecting for him in his video. And it definitely talks about the other side of, you know, we don't know what it's like with some of these, some of these Latin players, where they come from, their financial situations. And he kind of poses this question of, and again, Cano was pop multiple times after he got paid, et cetera. But if, if you have a family and you basically, you, you can't even put a roof over their head. It's hard to feed them. And you have an opportunity to sacrifice your reputation in order to provide for your entire family and give them a much better life like would you sacrifice your reputation for that Mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people when thinking about their own families and their own situation would say you know what I love my family so much I would like I for my family because we they come from something we can't we can't even fathom a lot a lot of us and so I I just think it's an interesting take on it that I recommend I completely agree and like I, like I said, I've gone through these, these emotions and this relationship with steroids from the beginning. Like the reason why I wanted to get involved in the industry was reading Rafael Palmero. Yeah. It's just, it was so interesting to me. Cause you look at Palmero and you're like, how the fuck did this guy do steroids? Like, I don't get it. And then that's when you learn about the different types of PEDs and everything like that. And it, it's just so interesting how, cause I wrote about how it does to your public image. And it's funny that you brought that up because Barry Bonds, cool. Like we almost forget what he could actually do at the plate. Like, do you remember, do you know a guy at this time of in place where he steps up to the plate and you stop what you're doing and you change the channel and you go and you watch? He was, I don't think anybody can mimic what he did. But here's the other one toward the, the home run run. I just don't but think. Be, but because he was so great, but then you think about guys, right? So PDs cloud, they kind of cloud his greatness. And because all we think about, oh, he did maybe did steroids. I mean, probably, but, but what about like Bartolo Colon? Do people remember that he did them? There's a lot of, there are a lot of players out there that people forget did it. And it just brushes like, you know, if they do it early on and then they continue to, you know, do well, which by the way, PED is also when you stop taking them, you get the, the positive benefits and the side effects of them, the, usually the positive ones for sometimes like six years. So you could stop taking them and you still have the benefit of it. For- Would you still test positive for them though? No, no, but That's you'll have like, but the, the benefits they're, they don't just like go away. I mean, what you do to your body with them, I mean, they, they last and they last many years. And so there's that part too, but either way, there are plenty of players that we forget. I think that did steroids and I think we'll get to a place where, cause I'm just like annoyed with the voting process now, not like, like the actual process itself, but like it just feels to me like people are petrified to vote. And I get that. That's why I don't really want to vote. Um, but I don't know. I feel like it bums me out to talk about the Hall of Fame because of all the nonsense surrounded by it. I wish I could just be like, this is what I feel. This is how it is. And this is why I feel this way. And they had a really great special on on it on MLB Network Queen Susan was on there, Celeste, of course, um, and then Rosenthal talked about it, and it was a little bit interesting, just because it was like you can see the guys kind of being scared to reveal their ballots, and and I think they should be because it's there's so much controversy. I just hope that we won't we, we get back to a time where I'm just pumped to hear who got elected, especially when it's guys that I cover now, and I just. I don't know if that'll happen for a very long time. And that's what sucks though, too. If, if, if Bonds and Clemens do get in the hall and it's a, in a weird way without the voting, cool, they got into the hall, but do you think it would be kind of like, eh, okay, but like they didn't do it the way that we're used to? 
you know? know. Yeah. I, I just hope they get in. They've got another year. So we'll see. I, yeah, I agree. And I, and I, and I'm praying for that only because I just want people to shut the fuck up about it. Like he deserves to be in the hall. He's the reason we would turn on our TV and he, he made it exciting and stuff. And I'm just like over it. Like, it's just like, yeah, like, I still like my shirt though. So I just hope that because once, once the 10 years are up and if he doesn't get in, I, everyone, so I'm going to get so many more weird comments on the plane. Like, you know, he's not in the hall of fame. Right. And things like that. And that I have to then, you know, deal with. I, I just don't want you to get on that no flight list. Cause that's just not good times. Actually, I've always kind of wanted to give you legal advice even though I don't know anything. I would love it. Let me hear it one day when I need some, <laughs> when I need some bad legal advice. I'm kidding. I guess some, some not accurate legal advice. I got you, mama. Um, okay, so let's shift to another thing. Um, obviously it's already end of January right now. Um, and that means spring training is on the way and I, it doesn't feel like it. It's really bizarre, um, but it feels very- that's it's not. Yeah. That's not. <laughs> yeah. And there not it is. Funny. Yeah. So, um, there was, there's a lot that's happening. They have like a letter going out and it was interesting to kind of see how many factors are involved in spring training. It's not just like, Oh, MLB says yes. So like, let's do it. There's like other factors involved. So there's a letter that was sent. Um, and let's also talk about the fact that COVID cases are going up a lot in Arizona. And I feel like that's being factored into it but I feel like it's starting to begin with a back and forth between the league and the players once again. Um, And we don't have to talk about the universal DH. We could save that for another thing, but what is going on? And are we going to start the spring training on time? No. And if you ask me that in end of November, December, I could, I mean, no, I I told my guys that I said, by the way, it's probably not starting on time. Yeah. Um, had multiple talks. And then of course, once that letter came out, some of my guys or whatever sent me screenshots and they're like, oh, the letter we've all been waiting for. Like, yeah, we knew that. And and one of the like most telling parts to me, and I talked to my guys about this too, was when Manfred came out and said that spring training will start on time. That's what he's expecting. And that to me was the boom, red flag that I needed that it will not start on time. And I, and I agree because I think he's he was trying to push out the message to say, be prepared to start on time. But same thing though. So you're, I'm, you're, you're taking the very, like you're, you're seeing the good in him. And I'm not going to say he's a bad person, but I'm telling you the reality probably was not the, oh, let's everyone be prepared. It was, I need to shift the narrative to blame the players. Well, right. And so right. I'm That's what- out that we anticipate when he knows they don't. And so then when it comes out that, that now they can't, well, it's going to look like it's the player's fault all along. We, we were anticipating to start on time. Correct. And, um, so I think why he said that was because it was interesting because what I was I, what I was told was he's in one room in the front office is saying telling owners GMs whoever be prepared to start on time but right next to him another meeting would be going on and this other individual is telling people yes be prepared but also we might have another situation where we will have spring training. Don't think it's going to start on time, but I'm also hearing the summer camp situation could happen again as well, which makes sense because of the quarantine factor. We would want them to do the spring training where I think there will be fans. I can honestly say that I think we will have fans at spring training. Um, but then when they factor into going to summer camp, that's going to say, well, that'd be a quarantine type of deal. They can quarantine their, their home fields, whatever for a little yeah. while. So oh, I don't think any of this really has anything to do with COVID though. And, and like the, the I actual, think that they're going to blame the actual, it on COVID. But the actual quarantine COVID, these play, like this, this has to do with owners not wanting to have games before there will be fans in the stands because they don't want to lose revenue. Mm-hmm. So ideally they would like to start in May when the vaccine's been out longer and it's a little more widespread and there's more of a likelihood that there will be fans in the stands. And in which case, then they would be more than happy to find a way to do double headers and try to come up with 162 games. The way the union looks at it is that there's zero reason that we can't start 
on time and have 162 games because last season showed us that albeit it took a long time of uh, back and forth negotiations that didn't go so well, but eventually we had some semblance of a season. And if we have some semblance of a season, we've shown that we can do it. And so there's no reason that there can't be 162 games. I do agree. Games. I agree. So- I was just talking about that. Like, like we actually did a really good job having, I mean, the beginning was kind of a shit show, like with the Marlins and the Cardinals. We were anticipating that. We knew there would be some bumps in the road, but like we ended it beautifully. Mind you, I'm saying that kind of, hypocritically because I'm exhausted still from last season. Like the A's put me through the ringer and it was only 60 games like damn. Um, But I think that if they can duplicate that and still add more games onto there, I don't see the issue. I don't, just don't see it. There's just no, the, the only issue is that financially the owners don't want to do it because they'll lose some money. And so that's the issue. And so they're going to, what they're going to do is right now they're, Owners, I think, are pretty sure that they're going to kind of put up a fight and not start on time, and they're going to try to make sure they don't start on time or get things like the postseason, extend postseasons, so they can make more money. And players are taking, and it's kind of, it can be seen as unfortunate because if they're going to take a really strong stance, and I agree that they have a good case, and if they file a grievance on it, that there's no reason that they can't start on time with 162 games, they could file a grievance, and all of that's going to play out, and it's going to be shitty for baseball and the fans and the public perception. But in the end, let's say they win, and they probably will the chances are the season will still be shortened. And so whether you pay everybody their full contracts or not, they're going to get hurt again because you will not have a full season to evaluate. We saw what happened with the 60 game season and salary arbitration. Those contracts were a lot lower than they should have been given the performance because it's 60 games. Yeah. And you do a second year of that, it's it has a compounding effect. It's just going to be a disaster. There's a lot of unintended consequences that will come from not finding a way to just get through this next season and to a new bargaining cycle and renegotiate the CBA. So I don't think it's going to start on time. I hope the union will find a way to, again, put egos aside, same with MLB, just find a way to, these are special circumstances. Let's just get through this effing season and then we will renegotiate a cba but okay so i want to ask just because like you do you did say you talk to your guys and stuff like that like how do those conversations go because even when i'm talking to my agent i wonder if sometimes like there's one agent who pacifies me and there's my other agent who tells me like it is and so i feel like with this though it's so fluid but not because we're blaming it on whatever, but because you know for a fact that there could be a lot of back and forth there. So do you just tell them straight up, like it's going to be a mess, but be patient or what do you tell them? Yeah. I mean, I just tell them this is the state of, this is the state of the sport and the union and MLB Um, from how I see it it probably won't start on time. Unfortunately, um, there are a lot of like there, there, it's going to be difficult for them to work together. So what would be best for you is as of right now, expect delay, but I think you still need to prepare as if it will start on time. Don't sit back and pretend that you have extra vacation days because that's not the right way to look at it. Don't get too fluffy. Don't get too fluffy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if you, you know, if things start to get a little, hopefully it won't get like this, but if they do start to look more like last season and the, or the quarantine negotiations, then I, you know, we will reassess and we will figure out, I mean, this is what we did with Bauer. We had to look at, okay, let's pretend now that we're starting, you know, of mid December of the off season and we're going to you know, train as if it's mid off season again and preparing the next month and a half or whatever for spring training. So why don't we end on this? There, a lot of stuff's going down. If you could give maybe the fans a, an optimistic thing for starting out the season, maybe we can end on like, hopefully a good note. Like if you, if I was a casual fan and I was worried about the season starting on time, tell me something that could like calm me down a little bit. 
All right. So okay. <laughs> I, I, it's very important to me to, and my, this is like my integrity here is to not like just dick around fans. I'm not going to, uh, it could start on time, but we saw how the 2020 negotiations went during quarantine. So I can tell you the relationship has not gotten any better and we've got a lot to figure out and hopefully can put differences aside. You know what you said? it. I know. And so, I feel like anything your, you know what, um, if I voted you to the hall of fame off of your integrity, I would still say yes, mama. And I feel like that's good that you're being honest. Cause we don't know. It's very fluid. A lot of, it's very unprecedented. We don't know. Um, but we can say we did have a season last season went relatively well. Hopefully they're holding on to that, but it'll be interesting to check in with you in the next week. Cause who knows what has, what will change until I'll, then. Maybe I'll just say that we'll end on this note. I told you guys we would have baseball last season and a we would finish the 60 games with the postseason. We will have baseball this season. Don't ask me how many games, but we will have it. Beautifully done. We will have baseball this season. So. <laughs> Cheers, Mama. Cheers. This is not water, once again.